And now we go into the, uh, the philosophy in the 18th century. And let's start with the most influential English philosopher of the 18th century. In 1739, only 12 years after Newton's death, David Hume published his Treatise of Human Nature. Now, only quotes can do justice to a philosopher such as Hume, so let me read you some. Hume is upstairs in his study when he writes the following passage in the treatise. Quote, I am seated here in my chamber with my face to the fire, and all the objects that strike my senses are contained in a few yards around me. My memory informs me of the existence of many objects, but this information extends not beyond their past existence. Neither my senses nor memory give any testimony to the continuance of their being. As I reflect on these thoughts, I hear a sudden noise as a door turning on its hinges, and then see a porter who advances towards me. This gives occasion for many new reasonings. First, I have never observed that this noise could proceed from anything but the motion of the door. And therefore, I conclude that the present phenomenon is a contradiction to all past experience unless the door which I remember still exists. Second, I have always found that a human body was possessed of gravity, which hinders it from mounting in the air, as this porter must have done to arrive at my chamber, unless the stairs I remember be not annihilated by my absence. Unquote. Now, Hume continues with this impressive line of reasoning, but you get the idea. He hears a door open behind him and then sees a porter. He infers that the porter opened the door. His room is upstairs. He infers the porter climbed the stairs. Now, compared to the inferences that we've seen Newton make, these results might seem modest. But that is not Hume's view. He examines these beliefs and concludes they are wild speculations without any rational justification. He writes, quote, Nothing is ever present to the mind besides its own perceptions. The degree of regularity in our perceptions can never be a foundation for us to infer a greater degree of regularity in some objects which are not perceived. But whenever we infer the continued existence of the objects of sense, it is in order to bestow on the objects a greater regularity than, is, than what is observed in our mere perceptions." Unquote. So, according to Hume, we are aware only of a kaleidoscopic succession of sensations. Out of habit, we arbitrarily group some of these sensations together and call them objects. But we can never acquire any knowledge of a world that supposedly exists independent of our sensations or validly infer anything beyond the sensations of the moment. He concludes this part of the treatise with the following. Quote, I have shown that the understanding, when it acts alone and according to its most general principles, entirely subverts itself and leaves not the lowest degree of evidence for any proposition, either in philosophy or in common life. The manifold contradictions and imperfections in human reason have so wrought upon me and heated my brain that I am ready to reject all belief in reasoning and can look upon no opinion even as more probable or likely than another. Where am I or what? Unquote. Well, we can answer Hume's question. No, I'm not going to answer it that way. Um, where in the country of Isaac Newton? What? Unfortunately, the most influential English philosopher of the 18th century. Now, we have here an unstable situation, to put it mildly. On the one hand, we have the inductions reached by Newton, which allowed Edmund Halley to predict the exact time that a comet would return after disappearing from view for 76 years. On the other hand, the country's greatest philosopher claims to have no reasons to believe in the existence of a door when he has his back to it. Even when facing it, he claims that he's not aware of a door, but only sensations. Now, this was a crisis. 
the efficacy of reason was at stake here in a particularly obvious and dramatic way. There had never been a more urgent need for a great philosopher to come along and provide a proper foundation for the sciences. What the world needed was a thinker like Ayn Rand. What it got instead was Immanuel Kant. 